Hello. Uh, the problem with that intro is that is essentially my talk. Uh, that's, that's what I did. So, hello. Uh, I am Laurie Roan. Uh, I'm an animator, uh, and I make things like uh, this. Uh, so I've been an animator for about 12 years, um, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk through my career and just show you what I do and sort of explain why I do that. So about 12 years ago, I started in studios, and this was my, my first job for a small studio. Wait, I've got something. I'm punching it up. Too small for a vessel, maybe some kind of missile. It's impossible to tell at this range, whatever it is. All right, I'm going to stop that because it's painful to watch. Uh, but yeah, that was my first job. It was um, Red Dwarf mobile phone episodes. So before there were smartphones, there was WAP. And people would spend two pounds downloading one of those clips. Uh, the reason that I bring it up is that I didn't study uh, animation at university. Uh, and that was my first job. We made 60 episodes of that. Uh, and so that was a kind of baptism of, um, I'd say fire, but that's just too strong. Um, from there, we moved on to television programs. This, uh, which I'll show you now. All right, my name's Luke, and I'm doing work experience. Look around you, yeah? Everyone's on their way to work. He's having a go. <laughs> Admittedly, working with limited resources, but that's what it's about, eh? Give the this a chance. Right, so that was for Modern Toss. Uh, and the reason I include it is that was a real formative experience for me making that. Um, we worked with fantastic art directors, an amazing voice cast of some of the best comedians of the time. This is about 10 years ago. And it just gave every opportunity to, to learn the fundamentals of character animation and really breathe life into something. And cemented to me that that's what I wanted to do for a living. So then I went on to not do that. Uh, and did a lot of work in uh, interactive media. Just, uh, things just seemed to go there. So I worked a lot for BBC, uh, for Disney, uh, Middle Eastern children's programming, um, and then recognizable characters that I probably don't have the license to show you. Um, and interspersed with that, a lot of corporate work. I've um, animated a lot of baggage handlers, uh, strangely. Uh, about five years ago, I went freelance. And I started to kind of have a few growing pains. I, I was, that's probably not the right word, but I was getting frustrated that I'd, um, without really meaning to, I divorced creativity from my workflow. I was just, I had a completely pragmatic view of my outlook. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll dedicate some time to creative play. So I started doing things like this uh, in my spare time, see if I could build a motion capture suit out of uh, ping pong balls. And you can, uh, but you shouldn't. It's just not that practical. Uh, and then aside from that, I'd uh, do little animation tests like this. Um, but everything I made had a sort of pragmatic backbone to it. I made this to demonstrate my play of light, uh, my ability to mix 2D and 3D. And that was really just my focus of that. I'd, ones like this, and this was just about um, fabric and like, I can do water. Um, each one of these were about 10 seconds long. My plan was to cobble together a showreel to make it appear as if they were massive projects that I was just showing you a, a glimpse of. But that's, that's literally what they were. Uh, and then in 2017, I went to Pictoplasma. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, Pictoplasma is a conference held in Berlin uh, each year, just purely around character design. And I found it such an inspiring uh, experience. It was lots of speakers uh, showing their work, and their work was all immaculate and just really imaginative. And the thing that really I took away from it is they had a real sense of agency around their own creative lives. And I felt simultaneously just in awe of them and incredibly jealous and depressed. Um, so I came home and I thought, right, I need a project. I want to start doing my own work. And so I set myself this task and it was really basic what I did. I, I decided, OK, every week I'm going to work hard, I'm going to do something fun, and I'm going to put it out every Saturday morning onto Instagram. 
So the first one I did was, was this. And th that is what it is. <laughs> and then about five weeks on, I, I maintained this thing, and about five weeks in, I created uh, this one. <laughs> So this is the one that changed everything for me. I put this on Instagram, and I noticed that the reaction was just much bigger than anything I'd ever had before. I also got featured on blogs, and I noticed that the, the viewing figures went up to about a quarter of a million for this one animation. And I started having conversations with studios that I'd already aspired to, to work with and invited them for meetings. And it gave me the confidence to sort of identify what my style of concept was. Uh, which was just things that are easier to show than to, to explain, like uh, this. So I'll just quickly talk you through uh, a bit of my process, because I'm already overrunning. Uh, everything always starts with a blank page for me. I do a lot of stream of consciousness drawing. So I just let my subconscious swim around the page and just see what it results in. Uh, this page culminated in the animation I showed you at the beginning with the two characters swapping the arm. Sometimes just ideas come to me just through combining two seamlessly unrelated ideas like Tupperware and bird mating rituals, uh, which might culminate in something like this. <laughs> And to give you an insight to what that looks like as I'm making it, this is the process. So this is my rig, and it shows you the controls of, of how you make something move like that. Uh, the reason I show this is I want to demonstrate that I try, for this reason, because it's just so technically in-depth, I try and set my um, concepts before I approach the computer. So if I'm doing a project that's around, say, motion, I might experiment in this way. And this slide just demonstrates to you how close I try and keep things to my initial instinctual drawings. So this is one called uh, Having a Sit Down, uh, which is an autobiographical piece. <laughs> and then this just demonstrates to you how I do my faces. All my characters have faces, uh, and I draw just reams and reams of them. I've got these sort of psychopathic sketchbooks just full of, of these illustrations. And I never correct them, I just, just blurt them out, and I mean, this is a bit pretentious, but I like to feel as if I've just encountered my characters, not created them. Uh, this is what my characters look like before I apply them to the 3D. I, I keep everything quite naive. and I, I, The intention is to just kind of humanize it. 3D can be quite a cold aesthetic, and this feels warmer, more human to me. So since I've been putting this stuff up on Instagram, uh, a lot of opportunities have come my way. Um, this is one that I did with It's Nice That Themselves. We did this film about Fact Gallery in Liverpool where I used my characters to explore the space. And that was a lot of fun to work on. And a year later on from being so inspired and angry uh, about Pictoplasma, uh, they invited me to actually do the promotion for the festival. So that meant a lot to me. There's my stupid grinning face. <laughs> um, and since then, I've done lots of other projects which I am not allowed to tell you about because they're all under NDA, but I have been allowed to tell you uh, that I'm collaborating with Google Labs on something at the moment with a view to it being released next year. Uh, so I guess the through line is don't be complacent and do your own stuff. Don't spend 10 years just waiting to do something you like. Thanks.